In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you always. My brothers and sisters, as we come together this morning on this eighth day of Easter, we begin by calling to mind our baptism, that moment in our lives when the resurrection was given to us. And so we begin the liturgy today with the sprinkling rite with the holy water. So we begin by blessing the water. Lord our God, in your mercy be present to your people's prayers, and for us who recall the wondrous work of our creation and the still greater work of our redemption, graciously bless this water. For you created water to make the fields fruitful and to refresh and cleanse our bodies. You also made water the instrument of your mercy, for through water you freed your people from slavery and quenched their thirst in the desert. Through water, the prophets proclaim the new covenant you were to enter upon with the human race. And last of all, through water, which Christ made holy in the Jordan, you have renewed our corrupted nature in the bath of regeneration. Therefore, may this water be for us a memorial of the baptism we have received and grant that we may share in the gladness of our brothers and sisters who at Easter have received their baptism through Christ our Lord. Amen. Oh. Uh-huh. 
May Almighty God cleanse us of our sins and through this celebration of this Eucharist make us worthy to share at the table of his kingdom. Amen. Glory to God in the highest and on earth is to people of good you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, almighty Father, glory to God in the highest and on earth peace to people of goodwill. Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us, have mercy on us. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. Let us pray. God of everlasting mercy, who in the very recurrence of the Paschal Feast Kindle the faith of the people you have made your own. Increase, we pray, the grace you have bestowed, that all may grasp and rightly understand in what font they have been washed, by whose spirit they have been reborn, by whose blood they have been redeemed. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. We have the children's liturgy this morning, so any of the kids who would like to go, you can come forward now. Let's pray. In the, name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. Lord Jesus, we thank you for the gift and new life that you have given to us through your resurrection, and we ask that you help us to carry it out and live it out in our own lives. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. So during the Easter season, our first reading is always from the book of the Acts of the Apostles, which describes the way that the early Christians would have lived out their new faith in Jesus. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. The community of believers was of one heart and mind, and no one claimed that any of his possessions was his own, but they had everything in common. With great power, the apostles bore witness to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, and great favor was accorded them all. There was no needy person among them, 
for those who own property or houses would sell them, bring the proceeds of the sale, and put them at the feet of the apostles, and they were distributed to each according to need. The word of the Lord. Thanks to the Lord, for he is good, his love is everlasting. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, his love is everlasting. Let the house of Israel say, his mercy endures forever. Let the house of Aaron say, His mercy endures forever. Let those who fear the Lord say, His mercy endures forever. Give thanks to the Lord, for He is good, His love is everlasting. I was thrust down and falling, but the Lord was my helper. The Lord is my strength and my son. He was my savior. There are shouts of joy and salvation in the tents of the just. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His love is that the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. By the Lord has this been done, a marvel in our eyes. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His love is everlasting. This year, our second reading will be from the first letter of St. John during the Easter season. And this letter was written to Christians who were observing that some of their fellow believers were losing their original fervor to love God and neighbor above all and to keep the commandments. A reading from the first letter of John. Beloved, everyone who believes that Jesus is the Christ is begotten by God, and everyone who loves the Father loves also the one begotten by him. In this way, we know that we love the children of God when we love God and obey his commandments. For the love of God is this, that we keep his commandments. And his commandments are not burdensome, for whoever is begotten by God conquers the world. And the victory that conquers the world is our faith. Who indeed is the victor over the world but the one who believes that Jesus is the Son of God? This is the one who came through water and blood, Jesus Christ, not by water alone, but by water and blood. The Spirit is the one that testifies. The Spirit is truth. The word of the Lord.
seen me, says the Lord. Blessed are those who have not seen me, but still believe. Alleluia. be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. You, o Lord. On the evening of that first day of the week, when the doors were locked where the disciples were for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood in their midst and said to them, Peace be with you. When he had said this, he showed him his hands and his side. The disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. Whose sins you forgive are forgiven them, and whose sins you retain are retained. Thomas, called Didymus, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples said to him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands, and put my finger into the nail marks, and put my hand into his side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were again inside, and Thomas was with them. Jesus came, although the doors were locked, and stood in their midst and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands, and bring your hand and put it into my side, and do not be unbelieving, but believe. Thomas answered and said to him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you come to believe because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and have believed. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples that are not written in this book. But these are written that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that through this belief you may have life in his name. The Gospel of the Lord. Sister Faustina Kowalska was a uh, Polish nun and a mystic who lived in the early 1900s. And in her life, she had several apparitions or visions of Jesus. She had discussions with him and saw him. In fact, um, in one of her apparitions, we, she saw a vision of Jesus with rays of red and white emanating from his heart. And that image of it was eventually painted into what we call the image of the divine mercy. And that image is in our chapel. And I know that many of you are involved in the Divine Mercy Novena, which is taking place over the last nine days leading up to today. You can still read about her apparitions today if you're interested. She has a diary, the Diary of St. Faustina. It's a lengthy read, and it's a difficult read, but it's a very good read. In the year 2000, she was made a saint. And in that same year, it was declared that the second Sunday of Easter every year would henceforth be known as Divine Mercy Sunday. And so today is Divine Mercy Sunday. One of the things that she attributes to Jesus in her diary is this. He says in her diary, Encourage souls to plate great trust in my fathomless mercy. Let the weak, sinful soul have no fear to approach me. For even if it had more sins than there were grains of sand in the world, all would be drowned in the immeasurable, in the immeasurable depths of my mercy. I personally find this very comforting. I hope you do as well. It's good to know we have a God who loves us so much that his mercy can forgive anything at all times. But often, God's mercy is, is underestimated by us. We sometimes think of God as though he's sort of keeping score, right? Like he's marking our wins and losses. And at the end of our life, if the losses outnumber the wins, then we would go to hell. In a way, that kind of reminds me of the NCAA tournament where my Boilermakers will be playing tomorrow night for the championship. But Father Jim told me that I can't preach on that, so I won't. The truth is, God does not keep score. God is a God of mercy. And he asked Sister Faustina to come and to share that message with all of us. Why do so many people think he's keeping score? I don't know for sure. I think it's because of our, our human limitations. It's difficult for us to comprehend the thought of infinite mercy. We all reach a point where we say, you know, enough is enough, and we, we can't do that anymore. But God is divine. Jesus is divine, and he can do that. And today's gospel has a few examples of his great mercy. At the beginning of the gospel, when he sees the apostles for the first time, 
We have to keep in mind that this is the first time he's seen them since his crucifixion. He had every right to be angry with them. He could have said, really guys, I spent three years with you. You saw me do miracles, raise people from the dead. In a matter of a couple of hours, you abandoned me and even denied me. But he didn't do that. The very first words out of his mouth were words of mercy. He says, peace be with you. And even later, when he sees Thomas, it's been a week now, Thomas has been told, but he wanted proof. Jesus could have come forward and said, Thomas, I mean, I was with you for three, I told you three times that I was going to rise from the dead. And when it happened, and your brothers told you about it, you didn't believe them, you still want proof. But he didn't say that. He simply offered Thomas the proof that he needed because he's a God of mercy. There's another example of God's mercy that has to do with Thomas that goes back to the times that Thomas speaks to us in the, in the Gospels. And I'd like to talk about that for just a moment. You know, Thomas was one of the 12, but we don't know a whole lot about him. He only has four lines in the gospel, is actually. But if you take his four comments, his four quotes in the gospel, and take them in sequence, it speaks to us about a journey of faith, about what it means to come to know the Lord in a very special way and to believe that he is God and to understand that his mercy helps us along the way. Thomas's first quote is when Lazarus has died. And Jesus says to the apostles, Lazarus has died, we need to go to him in Judea. Now, the problem is that the last time that they were in Judea, the people had threatened to stone them, and it was fairly recent. Thomas does not want to go back, and so he's frustrated. And he says to the Lord, let us go with him so that we may die as well. But Thomas is, is frustrated. The second time Thomas speaks is when Jesus says to the apostles, I'm going to the Father, and you know the way. And Thomas is confused, and so he questions Jesus, and he says, we don't know where you're going, how can we know the way? And then the third and the fourth quote from Thomas come in today's gospel. The first time is when he's seeking proof. He says, unless I see the nail marks in, my, in his hands and put my finger into his side and so on, I will not believe. He wants proof. The final statement of Thomas is a statement of unconditional surrender when he says, my Lord and my God. So when these four statements of Thomas, we see frustration, questioning, seeking proof, and ultimately unconditional surrender. This is the journey of faith that so many people are on, and it only occurs because along the way, God shows that he's a God of infinite mercy. I've had the great joy of seeing this journey play out because for the last eight years, my wife and I have led the RCIA or the OCIA program here at St. John Vianney. It's a, just a wonderful ministry. We get to know so many great people, and we get to know them on a personal level. We get to accompany them on their journey as they get to know Jesus in a better way, in a more profound way, and they get to know his church. And they ultimately come into the church at the Easter Vigil. A week ago, yesterday actually, we had the Easter Vigil and we brought 20 people into the church. It's just a beautiful thing. We always see these patterns play out, but in a special way we see it play out in the people who, who don't want to be there. And we do get a few. Every year we get one or maybe two who comes to RCIA simply because they want to be married in the church. Maybe grandma and grandpa or father and mother-in-law say, we need you to be married in the church. You need to go through RCA and get your sacraments so that you can have a mass at your wedding. So we get these every now and then, and, and we can see them come in a little apprehensive, to say the least. At the first RCA session, they sort of have their arms crossed and a scowl on their face, and, and you can almost read their mind. They're saying, am I going to have to do this every Monday night for six months? And, and the answer is, well, well, yeah, that's how the process works. But we start by introducing them to who Jesus is. My wife and I talk to them about Jesus, and we talk to them about why he matters. We witness to our own faith, and then we show them a series of videos called the search videos that explain why did Jesus come? Why did he die? Why does his death matter? Why is it important to us in the year 2024? And so as they watch these videos, you can see that frustration kind of melting away because the Lord is slowly working on their heart. It's nothing that I do or say, it's the Lord and his great mercy saying, I'm going to help them through this. And then we get to the questioning phase, and that's probably my favorite part, because that's when I know that the Lord is working on them, that his mercy is having an impact. They start to ask questions. Now, um, my wife and I try to answer the questions as best we can. We give them answers from our own experience, from the Bible, from, you know, the catechism. But in the end, that's really not enough. They need to have these answers by, given to them by Jesus himself. And so he intervenes, and in his great mercy, he starts to answer their questions and their prayers in ways that we just never could. And after they get through the questioning phase, they ultimately get to the seeking proof phase, right? That's where they say, 
okay, I, I heard what you said, but I want to know that Jesus is God. I want proof. I want proof that this is the church that he formed. And in the same way that Jesus could have been angry with Thomas in today's gospel and said, I'm not going to give you proof. He just offers them the proof they need. And they move along the journey until eventually we can see it in their eyes that, yeah, they can ultimately say in unconditional surrender, my Lord and my God. So at the Easter vigil, there's just this tremendous joy as we see so many people coming into the church who've been on a faith journey from different perspectives, right? But the reality is that God loves us so much and has so much mercy that he doesn't care how you came to the journey. All he cares about is that you're on it and he's going to help you along the way. We see it in children all the time, right? I see it in some of my own siblings as we were growing up. We're taught to believe something as cradle Catholics. I was. My parents said, this is, this is what we believe. Okay, great, check the box. But it took me a while to say, I have to come to that belief myself and internalize it. And I had to go through these stages that I saw Thomas go through. The only way we can get through these stages is with God's great mercy. And the fact of the matter is that he gives that mercy to us by pursuing us. He never gives up. We are the only faith where that occurs, if you think about it. We who are Christians, we believe in the one true God, and that one true God pursues us. He loves us so much that he wants us to come to him so that he can give us his mercy. But in other faiths, that's not true. Look at the, you know, the Buddhist faith. They pursue this thing called nirvana. But they are pursuing nirvana. It's something they have to reach. Nirvana never pursues them. New Age people pursue, I'm not sure what they pursue, but I think it's karma. And they're after this thing, this, this way of thinking that they have to pursue, they have to get to. It doesn't pursue them, they pursue it. But in our world, in our Christian world, the one true God, he loves us so much, he has so much mercy that he pursues us. Some of you may remember that Father Tim Mazur used to talk about a poem that he liked called The Hound of Heaven by Francis Thompson. The Hound of Heaven is a poem about a, a man who I believe is the poet himself who didn't believe, didn't believe in God. And God just kept pursuing and pursuing and pursuing until he finally gave in, hence the term you know, the hound of heaven. We have this wonderful God who just continues to pursue us with his mercy. And that's what today is all about, sharing that divine mercy with all of us so that we can understand that Jesus loves us and is willing to forgive anything at any time. We live in a world today that's continually trying to push God out of the picture. We see corporations and the media constantly telling us that we need to embrace lifestyles and behaviors that we know are wrong. I could see in my simple mind God being angry with us and saying, I've had enough, I'm done with this. But he doesn't, and he never will, because his mercy is infinite. And so on this Divine Mercy Sunday, we can all take comfort in the fact that his mercy is infinite, and that those who seek it will receive it, no matter where we're coming from, no matter what we've done. He doesn't keep score, he's a God of mercy, and to our benefit, he's a God whose mercy is, is indeed infinite. I believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. when baptism and now with great confidence we bring our prayers to our father that the church may continue to grow in charity and faith as she remains a sign of God's merciful love for all we pray to the Lord Lord hear our prayer 
that the Lord may look favorably upon and provide resources for the needs of individuals and communities. We pray to the Lord. Hear our prayer. That all who have been separated from God by sin may experience forgiveness and healing through the sacrament of reconciliation. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That all of us gathered here may be guided by the Holy Spirit in our work to build up the kingdom of God on earth by our words and actions. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all that we keep in our hearts and for those that we are asked to remember, especially Madalena and Sante More, Angelo Sove, Joseph Wasik, and Harold Beauchamp, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. The sick and suffering, especially Emma Farquhar, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have died this past week, may they find eternal rest, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, we ask that you hear these prayers we've brought before you this morning, for we are confident that you will answer them through Christ our Lord. Amen. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Lord, 
Accept, O Lord, we pray, the oblations of your people and of those you have brought to new birth, that renewed by confession of your name and by baptism, they may attain unending happiness through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, at all times to acclaim you, O Lord. But on this day above all, to laud you yet more gloriously, when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For he is the true Lamb who has taken away the sins of the world. By dying he has destroyed our death, and by rising restored our life. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, Every land, every people exalts in your praise. And even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God, To you, therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world, together with your servant, Francis, our Pope, and Alan, our Bishop, and all those who, holding to the truth and on the Catholic and apostolic faith, Remember, Lord, your servants. And all gathered here, whose faith and devotion are known to you, for them we offer you this sacrifice of praise, or they offer it for themselves and all who are dear to them, for the redemption of their souls, in hope of health and well-being, and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true. In communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, mother of our God and Lord, Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, and all your saints. We ask that through their merits and prayers in all things we may be defended by your protecting help. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family, which we make to you also for those to whom you have been pleased to give, the new birth of water and the Holy Spirit, granting them forgiveness of all their sins. Order our days in your peace and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flock of those you have chosen. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands, and with eyes raised to heaven, to you, O God, his almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In 
in a similar way. When supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands. And once more, giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the Blessed Passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ your Son, our Lord. We, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance and to accept them as once you are pleased to accept the gifts of your servant, Abel the just, the sacrifice of Abraham, our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer we ask you, Almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high, in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us who through this participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your Son may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember also, Lord, your servants who have gone before us with the sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ a place of refreshment, light, and peace. Twas also your servants who, those sinners, hope in your abundant mercies, graciously grant some share in fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, which John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, and all your saints, admit us to beseech you into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon, through Christ our Lord, through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord. You sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not in our sins, but on the faith of your church, 
and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. And the peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other a sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should have turned my life, but all I say the word and my soul shall be healed. An 
angel clad in white they see, who sat and spoke unto the three. Your Lord has gone to Galilee. Alleluia. 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 When Thomas first the tidings heard, how they had seen the risen Lord, he doubted the disciples' word. Alleluia. We now sing the Marian Antiphon found in your bulletins, Regina Chelly.
Let us pray. Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that our reception of this Paschal Sacrament may have a continuing effect in our minds and hearts through Christ our Lord. Amen. So in a few moments, we're going to have the devotions for Divine Mercy Sunday. But before we get there, so uh, three announcements outside of that. One is that tomorrow night, we have a quarterly Rosary for Life hosted by the Knights of Columbus and our Walking with Moms in Need group. So, um, and also the schedule is there in the bulletin as well. So if you're interested in that and participating in praying for that intention, um, that would be held quarterly at the parish. The second thing is that our Friday exercise classes have resumed, so you'll see details about that as well. And finally, for the month of May, if you're interested, what a great way to observe the month of May, the month of Mary, is to make a Marian consecration at the end of the month. Um, and so there's a booklet that goes along with it, and so each day there's a different prayer throughout that month um, to prepare for that consecration. So if you are interested in that, you, you'll need to order the book, and how you do that is listed in the bulletin. So for Divine Mercy Sunday, uh, three things going on. One, we do have our, our uh, pancake breakfast to celebrate the feast. Uh, the Knights of Columbus are hosting it. It also goes toward a good cause, so um, no reservations are needed. You can just walk right in, so that will be right after Mass today. Later on today at 3 o'clock will be the Sung Divine Mercy Chaplet with adoration, and then at 4 o'clock we'll have evening prayer um, to celebrate this feast. And then... Also, you'll notice on the way out, you may be noticed on the way in, the brown bags are available, and what those, how those work is, you know, you, there's a list of items that are needed, um, and you can bring those back next week, and then they go to the Agape uh, Food Pantry up in Romeo. Uh, part of the celebration of Divine Mercy, what the Lord asked Sister Faustina, um, was, you know, to receive his mercy through reconciliation, the forgiveness of sins, but then also to simultaneously then reach out to those who are in need, and so that's a great way to observe the feast. So uh, to conclude Mass today, we'll have the Divine Mercy Prayers. I'll bless the image here. Um, and you'll see in your bulletin on page 7, uh, they're the prayers that we'll pray together. So um, the final blessing will be from the back there uh, before we conclude Mass. So um, as we pray these um, prayers this, this um, afternoon, morning, uh, just so you recall that there is the indulgence that's attached to this. So and as we pray for the intentions of the Holy Father on this feast day, you can have someone in mind who's gone before us, or you can also um, ask forgiveness for your own sins through these prayers today. But that's part of the, the um, celebration of this feast is that the church makes that available to us. And so at this time, uh, we can go to page 7 of the bulletin. And we can face the back of the church toward the image. Let us pray. You expire, Jesus, but the source of life gushed forth for souls, and the ocean of mercy opened up for the whole world. O oh, font of life, unfathomable divine mercy, envelop the whole world and empty yourself out upon us. O oh, blood and water, which gush forth from the heart of Jesus as a fountain of mercy for us, I trust in you. And together, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again and is the Holy Catholic Church the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Now we pray for the attentions of the Holy Father, Pope Francis. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. 
Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners. Eternal God, in whom mercy is endless and the treasury of compassion inexhaustible, look kindly upon us and increase your mercy in us, that in difficult moments we may not despair nor become despondent, but with great confidence submit ourselves to your holy will, which is love and mercy itself. Amen. Holy God, holy mighty one, holy immortal one. Holy God, holy mighty one, holy immortal one. Holy God, holy mighty one, holy immortal one.